Two former post office executives have told the inquiry that they did not realise the organisation had been bringing prosecutions against sub-postmasters. Alan Cook, who was a managing director, admitted he should have known, whilst Adam Crozier, who was chief executive of Royal Mail, also apologised. Our reporter, Mark Ashdown, has the story. David Smith, Alan Cook, Adam Crozier. Finally, this inquiry is hearing from some of those at the very top of the post office in the years when hundreds of sub-postmasters were wrongly prosecuted. Time and again, they apologised. I'd just like to place on record an apology to Suma Misra and family. Because I'd like to put on record most strongly uh, my personal apology. I, I, I think it is a matter of real regret that all of those checks... For seven years from 2003, Adam Crozier was chief executive of the Royal Mail parent company. He said he was unaware of what was going on. As far as I recall, I don't remember anyone in the post office governance system, whether that's the board, the risk committee, the exec team, uh, the general counsel, the legal teams, most importantly, the operations and IT teams who own Horizon. I don't remember uh, any of those people flagging up any concerns in that system. Not good enough for Lee Castleton, who was left bankrupt and suicidal by his treatment at the hands of the post office his own prosecutorial department, the people in Royal Mail who, in their, in their prosecutions department in the law, uh, um, helped post office and actually helped their own lawyers in-house and, and took part in some of the prosecutions. So, no, I'm sorry, I don't believe that. I do solemnly. Sincerely and truly. Former managing director Alan Cook also made the extraordinary admission that during his tenure he had no idea the post office had the power to prosecute its own people. He apologised face to face to Janet Skinner, who was wrongly jailed. I can only apologise on behalf of the whole organisation for the way that you were treated. It was disgraceful. I can only apologise personally that whilst I had not heard of your case, I'm, I'm nevertheless, uh, I, I have an accountability that I should have been on top of it, and I wasn't. Next week, the inquiry will hear from some of those who are central to the prosecution, conviction, and even jailing of hundreds of innocent people. Mark Ashdown, BBC News. Time now is 14 minutes past eight. We're getting some news from Sydney of... The weight to the intensity and the pain and the suffering of what is happening in Gaza, because it is also of enormous proportions, unprecedented proportions. Lise Doucette, thank you so much. The inquiry into the post office horizon scandal, which came to particular national attention in January, resumed on Tuesday. Its star witness, Alan Bates, the campaigner for justice for post office employees like himself who were wrongly accused of fraud and theft. The news channel was showing him being questioned as the clock ticked towards one o'clock. It's dated, as you'll see, the 5th of October 2010, and the um, purpose of the document is a rescheduled meeting with you on the 7th of October. You're watching BBC News' special coverage of the post office Horizon IT scandal. Now, we've been hearing from Alan Bates, a former sub postmaster who has been fighting uh, for accountability. Now, we will continue our coverage shortly. The live coverage of the inquiry didn't resume for more than an hour, prompting this reaction from, amongst others, Greg Bell. During the live feed of the post office inquiry shown on the BBC News channel on Tuesday, coverage was abruptly terminated to switch to the one o'clock afternoon news. Just as Alan Bates was about to discuss details of his correspondence with Ed Davey, the present leader of the Liberal Democrats, who was minister in charge of the post office at the time. The one o'clock news is readily available on BBC One so at such an interesting stage of the proceedings, and particularly as this case is by far the biggest miscarriage of justice ever witnessed in this country, 
Why did you pull the plug? So why didn't the news channel continue live coverage of the inquiry while those who wanted a news bulletin could instead have turned over to BBC One? And more widely, why can't a dedicated stream or channel, perhaps BBC Parliament, be given over to showing the inquiry uninterrupted? We asked BBC News and they told us. The News at One is an important juncture of the news channel schedule, a bulletin that updates UK viewers on the most significant international and regional stories of the day. To serve the high interest in the post office inquiry during the News at One, we ran an always-on live stream on the website live page and on iPlayer. We will make sure these options are more clear in the future if people weren't aware of them. As well as being able to follow live events as they unfold, the news channel must be accessible to people who are just dropping in and want to catch up on the latest news and serve people who would like to see a broader range of stories. Finally, dominating TV news output on Monday was the solar eclipse that appeared across parts of North America, prompting great excitement among those that witnessed it. Nader Tofik was one of the BBC's reporters 